Auburn kid has always been involved with public service, from his days growing up in Georgia to right now as the managing solicitor for Charleston County. And he's also running for State Senate District 41. In this special edition of Quintess Most Ups, I speak exclusively with him one-on-one. -on -one. So, here we sit inside Washington Park. And right across the street is where justice takes place every day for Charleston County. You are the managing solicitor for 9th District uh, of Charleston County and you work under Scarlett Wilson. And I'm wondering, what is it like to be Culver Kitt, the managing solicitor for Charleston County? Well, you know, it's something that, uh, that you can't take lightly. Um, it's not, you make it sound probably a little bit more uh, powerful than it might be. Um, but uh, it, it's a burden, uh, you know. You, I, I look at coming into my office and, uh, you know, I've got a lot of serious cases, a lot of murders, a lot of robberies and burglaries, and it's something that, uh, you know, keeps me up at night. So it's um, it's a it's a great burden and great responsibility, and uh, you just try to treat it with respect every day and, and seek the truth and seek justice. And, you know, right and wrong is uh, it's a sliding scale and it's difficult to determine in each case. And you know, we just do our best. And so then here comes March 17th. You said the following on a Facebook quote: "It is official. I'm a Republican candidate for the South Carolina State Senate. You are hoping to replace my good buddy uh, Paul Thurman in the District 41 later this year." And I have to ask, where are you emotionally with that? Well, you know, it's definitely uh, emotionally trying. Um, you know, Paul is a friend of mine also, and I've uh, known him for a long time. Um, you know, he, when he decided not to run for re-election, uh, and it was an opportunity that there was an opening uh, in the Senate seat, um, it was something where I saw, um, you know, I've been at the solicitor's office for nine years now, and I was looking for a way to... Uh, to make a change and to try to use my talents and, and to um, affect uh, this community, which is a place that I love, uh, to affect it in a different way. You know, I've been trying to make, to make a difference in the criminal justice system, and uh, now I want to try to make a difference in different places like infrastructure, taxes, and education. Um, and so I just look at it like an opportunity to hopefully um, make a difference. Speaking of which, describe to me the following one word: the transgender bathroom bill. In <laughs> one word. Uh, confusing. Um, you know, I see both sides of that issue. Um, you know, I think about, well, what if I had a 12-year-old daughter in a in public school? And, a, and a, um, what if a, a transgender male wanted to take a shower in a public stall with her? You know, would I have a problem with that? I probably would. So I understand, uh, I understand some of the motives behind that bill, but I also uh, deeply feel that everyone needs to be treated with respect. And uh, that we need to have um, patience and understanding for everyone in every situation. Um, and so we need to find, try to find a compromise and something that works the best for most people. I'm not sure exactly what that is. To okay. be Speaking of which, let's talk about something that is also controversial in Columbia, and that is abortion. I'm pro life. Um, and it's not just a uh, campaign slogan for me, it's a, it's a life choice and a life decision. Um, it's something that uh, is near and dear to my heart, and it's something that's uh, personal to me. Um, you know, I try to respect other people's decisions and the things that they decide to do in their personal life, but um, that's one place that I'm unwavering. And, um, you know, I understand the other sides of the argument, um, and I respect our, our the laws of the land, but um, in my personal life, I am pro-life 100%. The medical marijuana bill. Medical marijuana bill, well, you know, One word, or do I talk well, you, about yeah, it? You talk, yeah, you go for it. Um, you know, the medical marijuana bill is interesting. I think that uh, we shouldn't be denying people um, an opportunity to um, treat diseases and issues that they're having and a variety of different medical concerns. Where um, it seems to the studies seem to indicate that, that marijuana and cannabis oil and things like that are beneficial. So I would like to give um, you know patients with issues that marijuana can be beneficial. I'd like to give them an opportunity to uh, receive that treatment. Um, but we need to make sure that um, it's not abused and it's not, you know, um, it's not capitalized for just profit. And it, we don't allow it to infiltrate our, um, our general public for non medical purposes. Uh, the refugee bill. Um, refugee bill, um, you know, once again, I'm sympathetic, but I'm not okay allowing Syrian refugees into this state, into this country, if they can't properly be better. And that's something that. Um, you know, it's a different day and age. People always try to draw comparisons back to, you know, World War II and things like that. But, you know, it's a different day and age. One person nowadays can do um, 
catastrophic damage to our communities and churches and, and gathering places and uh, airplanes and bus terminals. And, uh, so until we can ensure that the people we're allowing in this country are um, not a threat, um, I don't think we should be allowed it. And I think that applies across the board to everyone, yes. uh, not just Syrian refugees. But we need to vet anyone who's coming to this country uh, is not a natural citizen. You said this to the Myrtle Beach Center, I believe, for Part of the reason I'm here in South Carolina is to get away from it. If I were there, meaning Georgia, people would say someone made a call or pulled the string. I always thought that I would never do it, run for office, but I have always been public service minded. So I'm wondering, when did you get the public service bug in you? Well, I've always had it. I mean, that's, you know, my entire professional career. I mean, I came, you know, I, I graduated from law school. I did a clerkship on the circuit bench for Judge Beeper. I went up to the court of appeals and worked up there. And now I've been at the solicitor's office for nine years. Um, public service has always been in me. You know, I have a family very deeply entrenched in politics back in Georgia and in Florida. And, um, it was something that took a toll on my family. I mean, my grandfather especially, you know, he spent more time with constituents than he did his whole, own family. And it was something that was, took a toll on my father and took a toll on my family. And, um, I tried to get away from it. I hated in Georgia when uh, ever I would accomplish something. People would think, uh, that's just because of who he is. That's just because someone made a call for him. So I moved to Charleston, um, where I didn't know anyone. I don't have any family here. I, don't, I didn't have any friends when I first moved here. Um, and everything I've done and, and created here is because I'm, I'm my work ethic. Right. And um, so that's what I mean by that. That's why I never thought I'd get involved. That's why I started in Charleston, is because um, you know, I wanted to do it on my own. And that's something that's important to me. And I think that's an important um, characteristic of the Republican Party that I like, is that you know, we believe that anyone should be able to be successful if they work hard. And that is uh, a pillar of our uh, philosophy that I want to, uh, to try to shine a light on and try to advance. Finish these sentences for me. Hunting and fishing are. You know, it, it, it's a pastime, and it's a you know, and it's an enjoyment that we that I've grown up enjoying. Um, I don't hunt as much as I used to. Um, I fish all the time. Uh, part of a sport fishing team, right. we go off the sh go offshore fishing here all the time, yeah. and it's something that uh, is important to me. It's a, important to my family, and something that I hope we can protect for generations to come. Yes, Elan and Erica. Elan and Erica, they are the the light of my life, man. It's family. It's the most important thing in this world. Yes. You know. Um, my son is uh, probably the most uh, inspiration for me to do this. Um, you know, I want, he's about to go into the public school system. Terrifies me. Um, you know, I want him, when he comes of age, like I said, to be able to work hard and be successful for that alone. Not because I or anyone else did anything for him, but because he's smart in his work ethic. He should be able to be successful because of those things. And I want to help him build an environment that, um, that allows him to, to do just that. The Dollington School, the College of Charleston, and the Charleston Law taught you. Yeah, you know, I had some great professors in both places. Uh, you know, Dr. Moore, the late Dr. Moore, who's a political science um, guru in Charleston, in the community, um, was a great mentor to me. Um, you know, I must have taken four or five of his classes in the College of Charleston. He, he probably re-inspired much of my interest in politics, to be quite honest. Um, and not just the history of Charleston, but in, in the unique political um, backstory that, that we have here. Um, you know, at, at law school, at, at Charleston School of Law, um, it was more applicable. You know, it's where you learn how to apply a lot of things that we learned over time. I had a lot of great contacts. And my first job, you know, Judge Peeper um, was my professor at, at Charleston School of Law. That's where I got my first job in law. Um, I, you know, while I was in law school, it was with him. So those institutions were. Um, instrumental in um, creating the profession that I have today and, and bringing me up to, uh, you know, to kind of um, help hone that public service mind that I had and help me apply it and hopefully make a difference um, today and in the years to come. Uh, you said that you have been at the solicitor's office here for nine years, and as you know, Charleston has really seen the worst over the past year. With, I mean, from Walter Scott to Tyreek Gadsden to Bob Emanuel, and I know you can't talk about most of those cases, but where are you guys emotional? It's been trying, but you know, it's also been, um, I think that as those cases come to fruition, I think you will see the best of the social justice. And Scarlett has not only been a mentor and an advocate of mine, 
Uh, well, she's a friend, and I think we will all be very impressed with how she and our office handled those cases and um, seek justice. And I think that um, history will prove um, that we made the right decisions in those cases. Um, I think time to tell. Yes. Well, Kovacan, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate this. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you.